Hi there, welcome to this psychology topic video on biopsychology, this one looking at plasticity and functional recovery, the essay writing. Now this video is one of three and in part one we examined the definitions and key research and in part two we took a look at how to answer different exam questions on this topic looking at short answer questions and application questions and in this video we're going to look at the essay writing question. Now the essay question that we're going to examine is describe and evaluate evidence of plasticity and functional recovery after trauma in the brain for 16 marks. Now as always I stress the importance of planning any essay and remember in particular that you're only going to have really 20 minutes to write an essay in the exam which equates to roughly speaking 500 words if you're a moderately quick writer. That's about 175 words of knowledge, 325 words of evaluation. So let's start by considering our A01 and the question is describe and evaluate evidence of plasticity and functional recovery and therefore there are two key elements that the question wants you to focus your answer on and they include brain plasticity and functional recovery and therefore my A01 will certainly include a definition and example of brain plasticity in this case I've used Maguire and definition of functional recovery which I'm going to elaborate with some specialist terminology and use the term neuronal unmasking. So here's what an outline might look like. We could say that brain plasticity refers to the brain's ability to change and adapt as a result of experience. Researchers demonstrated that the brain continues to create new neural pathways and alter existing ones in response to changing experiences. For example, Maguire found that the hippocampus of London taxi drivers was larger in comparison to non-taxi drivers, which suggests that the experience of driving a taxi led to brain plasticity in the hippocampus. And that's our first part, so our A01 including the brain plasticity. We're now going to go on to talk about the functional recovery aspect. So the brain also appears to show evidence of functional recovery, which is the transfer of functions from a damaged area of the brain after trauma to other undamaged areas. It can do this through a process termed neuronal unmasking, which is when dormant synapses open connections to compensate for nearby damaged areas of the brain. This allows connections in the brain to become activated, thus recovering any damage occurring in specific regions. And there we have it, a nice outline which has included definitions and examples or elaboration, which is written in around 120 to 150 words. Now let's consider the evaluation. As always, I recommend planning to write approximately three points, and it's the quality and the depth of the points that's the most important element. For this particular essay, I might draw on research support by Kuhn, who looked at the effects of video games on the brain. I might draw on research support by Maguire, who looked at the taxi drivers. And then I might look at a positive application of functional recovery to the field of neurorehabilitation. Finally, I might wish to extend my Maguire evaluation point by incorporating in an issue debate that I'll demonstrate in a moment. So let's start by looking at a straightforward evaluation paragraph for Kuhn. Here we might say that there is research support for the idea of brain plasticity. We go on to bring in our evidence and we say that Kuhn et al found a significant increase in grey matter in various regions of the brain after participants played a video game for 30 minutes over a two month period and that was in comparison to a control group. And this matters because it provides clear evidence for brain plasticity and shows how experience can cause structural changes in the brain. So notice it's a very short paragraph, but it is simple, and yet it is still effective. Now let's look at a significantly more developed point that incorporates an issue and a debate. So here you might say that there is further research to support the notion of brain plasticity. Okay, we made our point. We're now going to bring in our evidence. Maguire found that the posterior hippocampal volume of London taxi drivers' brains was positively correlated with their time as a taxi driver and that there were significant differences between the taxi drivers' brains and those of controls. Okay, So we summarise the evidence. Here's the important bit. We're going to incorporate an issue in a debate now. So we could say, however, some psychologists suggest that research investigating plasticity in the brain is limited. For example, Maguire's research is biologically reductionist and only examines a single biological factor, which is the size of the hippocampus, in relation to spatial memory. This approach is limited as it fails to acknowledge and take into account all of the different biological and cognitive processes involved in spatial navigation, which may limit our understanding. Now we need to explain, which is really a conclusion to that entire evaluation paragraph. So here we might say, therefore, while Maguire's research shows that the brain can change in response to exposure to a particular task, some psychologists argue that a holistic approach to understanding complex human behaviours may be more appropriate. And you can see the difference between our second evaluation paragraph and our first one, in that the depth of this one is so much more, and therefore it's a highly, highly effective point that really counts for two in the exam, because we've incorporated an additional evaluation as we've gone through. 
Finally, let's take a look at our strength, which is our positive application of functional recovery research to the area of neurorehabilitation. Here we might say a final strength of research examining plasticity and functional recovery is the application of the findings to the field of neurorehabilitation. Understanding the processes of plasticity and functional recovery has led to the development of neurorehabilitation, which uses motor therapy and electrical stimulation of the brain to counter the negative effects and deficits in motor and cognitive functions following accidents, injuries and even strokes. And this matters because it demonstrates the positive application of the research in this area to improve both cognitive functions and behavioural functions of people suffering from injuries. Okay? So there you have it. It's an entire essay on plasticity and functional recovery in 472 words that contains uh, a nice and detailed AO1 section, three effective evaluation sections, which include an issue and incorporate an issue and a debate within the answer. There you have it. In this video, we've looked at how to write an essay on plasticity and functional recovery. Hope you found that useful. Thank you once again for watching.